Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be doing a video tutorial and analysis of Rise of the Vampire. This map was created by Marshmallow and um, here was the gameplay that we had on March the um, 17th. The couple of people on Discord. I would like to share you the gameplay of them because I found it pretty interesting. So, um, this map has a vampire theme. We have um, the vampire side. Uh, so this is the, the vampire lord. This is the wife. What they are trying to do is they will try to assassinate the king right here. So if this king dies before this timer, then vampire won the game. If the hunters which is these four guys over here this is the ranger mage priest and the seeker managed to defend the king before this timer runs up then the hunter won the game there's another alliance in this game it's the werewolf he's a neutral one but after 20 minutes, he can choose which side to join. That is totally up to his decision to make. And I will go to that a little bit later when we get into the game. So the first thing that you always want to do when you are a vampire is you will always want to spawn the minions. Vampire Lord and Vampire Wife have both have the minion skill. So you want to spam this as soon as you start the game. And then you always want to upgrade them into the uh, elite warriors. And I will show you that as soon as I start this. So Blood Knight. So when you upgrade them, it costs 50 gold, but he's stronger. And he becomes a ranged unit. This guy has a lot of good spells that can be used to kill Hunter later on. So just move them down here and the second thing that you always want to do as vampires is you always want to buy a potion of great mana as you can see here why because ma um, vampires use a lot of mana you always always want to buy this because it helps you a lot later on when you have to fight against hunter you always have a mana problem as vampires, so this will solve the problem right away. This is my wife. She would also buy a mana pot, like a lesser one, because she doesn't use a lot of mana. After you uh, you buy your mana potion, the third thing that you always want to do is you share control with your vampire wife, and Vampire wife also need to share control with the vampire lord. So the reason why you want to do this is because later on in the game, when there is a lot of unit in the map, you always want to make sure you can control each other, so it doesn't the unit doesn't become waste. And also by sharing control with your wife, she can gain access to the altar of power. Um, there's a lot of really powerful spell in this altar, and I will go to that you guys a bit later on but now we let's focus on the um, the creeping pattern of the lord so the first thing when you want to do uh, is to move to this gateway when you do that it will teleport you to here then you can see my wife just summon his um, his acolyte and then upgrade them into elites so vampires usually the one to go here for creeping uh, I want to pause a little bit. Um, so what the um, what the hunters just did is that um, they are doing a rush shadow. This is a um, um, like a strategy that was uh, pretty reliable about a couple of months ago. Uh, so what is a rush shadow means? It means that you are trying to rush four of your heroes to this 
location over here and um, the mage uh, has a skill that can activate the um, the lower um, symbol in here. So what is lower? Lower is um, it's a symbol that looks like this, and you need to have a lower stone to activate that. When you try to activate um, something in the lower, um, a lot of mysterious things will happen. Uh, such as it will summon a creature for you to attack, or it, later on in the game it might summon a very powerful ally that can be used to help vampires defeat hunters. So um, that's a little bit of thing that you want to know as a new player is in Rise of the Rim here. So it, it looks something like this. So in here, there is a lower stone symbol that you can activate. So when you activate the symbol in here, it will summon five heroes, a uh, five level five heroes. Um, if you kill five of them, so you can see one, two, three, four, five. If you can kill five of them with four heroes in here, everyone will gain at least a level and a half. Very good for starting. So. The reason why four of them need to be here is because these guys are pretty strong. You can see that they have a lot of health. Now, after killing them, they will gain one level, which is pretty good. So let's continue with um, the video. So we can see that they're doing pretty okay. Move on to my side. So as vampires, you want to do what you want to do is you want to just go here and try to kill this guy as fast as you can. Just kill this guy. This guy is pretty strong. That's why you always want to kill him as soon as you can. When you finish killing this guy, just move down here. Down here. As you can see, when I just finish killing him, just move down here. So the reason why I don't want to stay here and keep these is because it's a waste of time. You always want to do this. You, know, you always want to creep as fast as you can on that guy and then you run down here. There's two ways for you to creep as vampire. You can um, finish this camp in here and you go to your very website. I for this patch, I never do it because the uh, the Fire Lord is really strong. And at the beginning of the game, if you if you try to creep him, he will massacre all of your units. It's really bad if, if you you don't have a lot of units at the beginning of the game. At the beginning of the game, you always want to creep as fast as you can because if hunters try to invade your areas. You, you can't really do anything and if you're under level you will get murdered so avoid this camp in my opinion it's really hard at the beginning of the game so that's the reason why I don't go to the left side and creep them because it's very hard, hard. and it costs a lot of troops so there's another way to creep which is the easier way um, as soon as you kill the uh, level 10 creep in here just head down here straight and creep in here this is a much easier camp and after you creep this camp you will get about level 2 it's not as hard as uh, the fire lord and it gives you more levels so I choose uh, to creep in here <coughs> so what I just do there is um, this blood knight has a skill called um, raise death what it do is that um, it creates a skeleton uh, corpse and then they can also summon the skeleton so by doing this in here it helps me creep faster so I want to go a bit uh, of the skill up from the vampire and the lord vampires um, have uh, four skill uh, for active skill that he can skill up, one skill 
that he already has in the beginning and one skill that can be available um, only at night so the skill that he already has is the uh, summon minion that uh, I just told you uh, at the very beginning of the video um, by using the summon uh, minion skill he can um, upgrade them into uh, the elite warriors which is right here uh, that is a very useful spell and you always always want to use it like, as soon as the cooldown goes off um, vampires also have um, a, a koi, dead koi skill um, his second skill is a um, skill that does uh, AOE damage and the third skill is used to summon a, a bunch of bats that he deals damage around him his ultimate is really powerful in this version it can stun people for 4 seconds uh, if I recall correctly uh, that is a lot of um, time um, and you always want to get that ultimate as fast as you can for my um, gameplay I always want to max the koi and the um, the second skill, the AOE damage, and I never skill up the third skill because I personally find it pretty pretty weak against Hunter. It doesn't deal the damage fast enough, so I just skill up koi and the second skill. Wife has um, has a kind of like the same skill set as a uh, vampire lord. Um, she also has a skill that summon minion and she can use it to summon uh, uh, to upgrade them into elite ones so the elite one is a little bit look different than the uh, and the blood knight but it's the same thing have the same skill um, she has um, a skill that can stun hunters for three seconds a skill that can aoe heal um, ally vampires during um, in a really small radius um, she also has a skill that can summon the hound but, uh, and I will show you that later and her ultimate is uh, uh, it's kind of like the uh, vampires summoning the bats but it's a little bit stronger because it is the ultimate um, vampire's uh, wife has a an escape skill called summoning bats so whenever her HP is really low she can uh, use that skill to transform herself into a bunch of bats that can fly through obstacles. That skill is usually used uh, when you want to try to escape from something. So, um, let's go back to the video. Kill that. So the um, hunters finished this camp already and what they just do is that they TP to this town hall right here and the mage, the person who TPs everyone, also activate the lower stone in here to summon this guy. So this guy is one of the, um, the bosses from the lower stone. If you manage to kill this guy, it will drop a very powerful legendary item that will help you a lot um, to beat the vampires. Um, so as you can see, everyone is level two and a half. This guy is two and a half. Where's the other archer? Oh, there she is. So two and a half. After you kill this guy, they will get one random legendary weapon which gives a lot of stat and I will come back to you as soon as this guy is done let's go back to the vampire's perspective Take this guy summon minion upgrade them immediately to what might you always want to group control them um, I always do group control one as vampire lords and elites group control three as um, Alter. This altar is very powerful at the beginning of the game. So what I just use right there is a skill that can scout where is the location of the vampires in the map. So you can see the little white thing over here. It's pinpoint where the vampire is in the map. 
um, you, if it's a really short cooldown spell, so you always always want to try to use it as soon as it goes off cooldown, because you, when you use it, you know where the vampire is, you know what they're trying to do to you, so you can kind of like counter counterplay it. So always group this as a control. You can group whatever numbers you want, but my preference is three. This guy plus elite is one. This thing is three. Then later on when you have more elites, you can group them as two with the vampire lord. So this is one of the uh, smaller boss in this camp. He's slightly weaker than the fire lord. Fire lord is level 15. This guy is level 5. He's very slow, so and he's very, uh, he. The only thing about this guy is that he has cleave damage, which is very strong. So when you want to try to do to keep this guy, first thing you want to use your altar to summon a spell called Demonic Healing Aura. What does this do? It gives you a bonus HP regen. Usually. But during the day, skeletons will have a negative HP regen. Second thing you always want to do is you want to spam cripple on this guy. So cripple, as you can see, I always spam cripple on him. It this makes him hit slower uh, and further reduce his damage done to your team. And the third thing you want to do is you want to make sure his his back is turned um, to the opposite side of your elite because he can cleave your unit. So if you make him turn um, his back um, to the opposite side of your elite, they will not take any damage. So after you uh, after you kill the pit lord, you always want to go here right away. This is the spider camp. They, they give a lot of good experience. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to drag the creep, creep from here and here to here. It saves time for us. So the creep following me. I summon the creeps here and I upgrade them right away. And then I group control them, make sure that they're not like standing around here doing absolutely nothing. They kill the Revelin level 10, and so one of them will receive a legendary um, uh, item. Let me see which one has it. Okay, so this is this one of the legendary items that you can either buy it or you can either receive it when you kill one of the lower uh, bosses, lower stone bosses. This is a very good uh, item for the priest and. Um, she will be the one who will be focused a lot by the vampires so it's good for her to have a a armor that um, can um, ensure that her survivability is higher than the other ones um, okay, so they will be also be invading our camps in here so that's why I'm, I said vampires need to creep as fast as they can Just doing some basic creeping stuff. As soon as you're done with creeping in here, you can see the lower symbol in here. So what I'm trying to do next is obviously activate this lower. A few thing you wanna do, remember when you activate this lower, this is a very very powerful boss. Um, always try to uh, select your altar and cast the demonic healing into this area over here so that your units can gain health uh, when you're trying to kill the bosses so if you're not um, using that spell your units will lose a lot of health let me show you this is one speed and their health just drop like crazy so I just summon the bosses 
this is one of the smaller creeps and this is the boss this boss is very powerful so in order for you to creep this guy as safe as you can you what you want to do first is use your um, use your elite warriors to cast a variety of harmful spell on them the elite warriors can be upgraded two times can be upgraded one time sorry he can also be upgraded into Vargas this creature can cast slow on on the enemy this thing will give 50% chance of uh, miss when it attacks so it greatly reduce his um, its um, its damage um, when I saw people play this uh, they always have problem creeping this um, this creep because it deals too much damage <coughs> and the spell that it just did is it's a um, lightning deals a lot of damage to to an area an enemy in the area so one zap and my unit just dropped to a pretty low health <coughs> he can also cast silence on the enemy and you can see that my lord is it's silence too so when this happens what you want to do is you try to select your elite warriors and he has a skill called dispel magic so just cast it in this area over here and it should be okay uh, i don't recall myself um, using that skill during this game um, let's see if i remember using it i don't think i use it on this match, that's not good. Okay, uh, I have to keep that in mind next time when I do it. So my wife just come here, she just heal my unit. That's great. So you see the slow spell greatly reduced its damage. Like any other lower stone event, when you kill a boss from it, it will drop a legendary item. Um, so. It just ran out of the miss. I should have cast another miss, but I forgot. That's fine. So my wife just get a legendary item. This is a very good one. It gives 20 agility, increased hero movement speed by 20%, and it can give a 20% of evade and attack. Very nice. So first encounter of the game: vampires um, and hunters. But during the, the day, especially on the very first day, you always want to avoid them because they are stronger than you during the day. They get um, bonuses during the day uh, and you are weaker during the day so, and you are under level. So what you want to do is you want to try to avoid them. This gold mine in here can be harvested by vampires, however if the mage uses a skill that can um, the mage has a skill that can uh, protect the runes from being harvested. As you can see, the the rune is uh, the rune stone is protected by the circle thingy in here. Um, what this does is that it it allows uh, um, it does not allow the vampires to let his creep in here and and harvest the gold in here. Um, any smaller minion or lesser minion. That tries to enter the circle will be destroyed instantly. This does not apply to heroes like Vampire Lord, Vampire Princess, uh, and the two other um, big minions, which I will show you later on this video. Those are the only exception. Anything else that goes into the circle dies immediately. So this is the rune stone that has been uh, protected. There's also another two rune stone that you can harvest it in this game. This one and the one down here. So if it does that does not have a circle in here, it means that I can harvest it without a problem. Since it, since it's had a circle in here, I can't go in here because my minions would die. So what I want to do in here is that I want to try to get away from from the uh, from the hunters. Let's continue with the videos. I tried to run away, so I said in chat, run. And I also played Vampire Lord, by the way, so I forgot to tell you that. So, so, 
what I'm trying to say here is that I try to tell my wife that I I don't need the, the legendary bow. So what Hunter is trying to do here is very nice. They're trying to block our way to access to the lower uh, items in here. So he just summoned another uh, lower feature. This guy is pretty strong. He's the spider uh, version. Uh, it's pretty strong and he's also tanky too. After you kill this guy, it will also drop a random um, legendary item, which is very good for the uh, hunters. Usually people never con contest with this, and it's not a good thing. You always want to contest the uh, the bosses, yes. Because it, not only it gives good experience, but it also gives you a good legendary item too. Um, so if they steal this boss, what do we have to do? we have to go somewhere else and creep uh, so a recommendation for vampire players if you're new and something like this happens don't just sit there and, and, and wait for them uh, you have to go somewhere else and this is this is um, the place that I usually go I would go back here and creep in here there's a lot of place to creep on the map so don't be nervous if you get uh, contested by the vampires. So, creep here. Just, you want to make sure that you are not under level. Uh, if you can make sure that it's uh, okay, then you're good. Vampires just need level. If they have level, then they can kill whatever um, hunters that they like. But if they're under level, it's hard for them. So, creep here. Let the uh, so I just use a skill from the altar. That skill allows me to flare an area. It also reveals um, invincible units. So what I um, what I'm trying to do here is I want to try to scout what items that say. Uh, so everything is docked in here. However, you can see that this area is. I can I have vision of this area because I use the spell from the altar. It also that skill also has a short cooldown. So a good way for you to scout where hunter is is you use the skill that can ping in the map where the hunter is and you use the player skill to reveal that area. Uh, using that combo you can um, find where the hunter is what items that they have so this is the item that they got from the spider it's also one of the legendary items it's not good for the mage uh, because it's, it is a string item it would be beneficial to put it on the seeker um, even though she's an agility hero she's, uh, she's known as a tanker of the team so you want to beat her as tanky as possible so she can be the meat shield of the team so after they finish creeping this I'm assuming that they can go creep around here or they might TP somewhere else to creep but we will see that later I'm just creeping here nothing special creep here will get me to level 5 so as you can see that is a TP sign so after a duration, the uh, the player spell will end, and I don't have the vision of the area anymore. But when I see this, I know right away they're trying to TP somewhere else. Usually, um, when you finish creeping this, you will TP up here and try to creep in here. It gives really good experience in here, so I'm pretty sure they will do that. Because uh, uh, that's what I would do too if I am hunters. So let's, let me see if I'm right. So this is the TP uh, skill from the mage. So whenever he uses TP skill, he's also becomes invulnerable. This is very annoying for me because uh, whenever I try to kill him, he if he uses spell, he will get away from me without being killed. This has a pretty short cooldown, and it can be abused for. Um, moving around the map pretty quick, so I hate this spell a lot. Uh, the only downside of this skill is that you can only TP the hero. 
So you can see every hero is it's TP to the top. And then they will go here and creep this camp just like I said earlier. And they will try to summon a boss there. So, as you can see it TPs all the all the heroes in here. Keep here gives good experience. There's a rune stone in here that this guy can also come here and activate it. Okay. This is what he's trying to do. And he gets a level every time he does that. And this thing protects for 5 minutes. Very strong, right? This is why this guy is always the highest level in the map. As um, as a city guard player, you can also give level to your hunters by select on the king. Um, I usually always give levels to the priest. She's the uh, character you always want to protect. But if she dies, it's seventy percent over for the for the hunter. So you always want to make sure that she is safe. So they just creep this camp. Let's go back to Rampart side. So um, after finish creeping this part, I just move here, creep a little bit in here, and then I go here and creep. So interesting. Uh, what what is interesting about the camp down here is that this guy gives okay experience, but there is a lower boss in here that we can kill and get items on it. So they just activate the uh, bosses. This guy is the, probably the easiest boss. You kill this guy, you get a good item. And it's a legendary item too. Very nice too. And what we're doing is we're just creeping here. Just make sure that um, you, when you play vampires, you always, always try to creep during the day. During the night, you are you are trying to um, get to level 8 to start um, killing vampires. So this guy, when he dies, there's a legendary item will be dropped. I think I just saw it. Um, yeah, this one. So, Seer's uh, Gloves of Power. This is a very powerful legendary item. This, this uh, gives good stats. And it also uh, reveals two sides. And it can be um, used to cast reveal or target location. This is a really, really good item. Um, and this is also the item that is not available to vampires. Um, they can only receive these items um, if they kill one of the lower bosses in here. However, hunters can buy, it. and most of the price um, for legendary item is 2,000 gold, which is pretty cheap. Um, so after do finish creeping here, uh, there is currently only one lower bosses on the map, which is here. Um, but we already take it, so this guy is very strong. This boss has a lot of damage. His only downside is that his attack speed is slow, but he hits hard and he cleaves too. So what you always want to do is you want to cast a miss spell on him like I did with the other boss up here. Second thing is you always want to try to cripple him so that his attack speed, speed is slower. Um, if you can do that and it should be easy, this guy would go down quickly. So the first night comes, um, when night comes, vampires get a, a lot of boost to their power. First thing is that they gain 50 armor um, because of the night bonuses. And that is called Shrouded of Night. So it just gives you the plus 15 armor, makes you tankier. And the second uh, benefit that uh, Nighttime gives is that it gives a 20% increase of um, attack to all undead units. So everything that's considered undead is 20% bonus uh, damage. Okay, so triple him, just make sure that his attack is low. Then he hits pretty hard. Oh my guy dies there. Okay. So 
after this guy dies, it drops a dragon armor. It's the similar legendary items that uh, that in the healer. Oh, where's the healer? So here, same as as the one that uh, she picked it up earlier. Really good weapon for uh, increased survivability, and it also blocks a spell, which is also great. So the first thing that you always want to do during the first night is that select your altar. It has a spell that can improve um, a hero's level by one. And what you always want to do is you want to try to improve your wife level to one. So she's level seven, bam, level eight. This spell also gives 500 gold and a level to the selected hero. What I recommend it is always give it to the wife. You can only use it two times every night because of the cooldown. So every night it um, lasts for um, 20 minutes. Oh, for 10 minutes, I'm sorry. And that skill has a cooldown of um, roughly about um, less than 5 minutes. So you can spam it. Um, it's pretty quick. You can spam it two times to enter the wife. It also gives her a 500 gold, which is pretty nice. Uh, so this is me, I'm still level 6. I'm just trying to creep to um, get to level um, get to level eight, and then after level eight, I will get a an ultimate that can stun hunters for eight seconds or for four seconds, I'm sorry, which makes um, killing a lot easier. Simple creeping from level 7. And I said focus healer. So, as vampires, you always want to try to focus on the healer. Um, if you can do that, then you would win. Uh, the game would be 70% uh, over, as I said. Um, so just trying to creep. So, I said I need to wait. My wife is also. Pretty decent too. We we play on um, on Discord. Um, so he said for tentacles, so he knows. Tentacle is is um, it's a spell from the Lord. It summons tentacle around the target, but it also stuns the, the um, everything around it for four seconds. So I encountered the werewolf at night. So at night, the werewolf um, he can transform into his um, his uh, aggressive form. Um, this is this form deals a lot of damage. It can also win walk and um, overall it is a, a form that can be used for attacking something. Um, during the day, he can transform back into his human form. That form is for defensive play. It can heal and um, uh, overall it's a very very tanky hero. This guy, on the other hand, it's, it's kind of squishy. Is 4k HP, but he does not have a um, like a, um, as tanky as the other guy. Has no heal on this guy, but he can escape using the wind walk skill. So during night, you can transform into this form, uh, and it helps um, you to creep faster as werewolf. So I recommend it if you're playing werewolf, you, you try to uh, to transform him into uh, into the uh, wolf form. Caesar to creep. So back to my part. As you can see also there's a lower symbol in here, but I don't activate it. This is because um, this lower um, symbol in here represents the one of the um, powerful creature. Um, as I said earlier about the um, 
a rune stone. If any lesser minion tried to enter the circle, it would die immediately. The situation that does not apply to only four characters in the game. Um, vampire Lord, Vampire Wife, that's a wife, wife, and this Fey Bat in here. He's considered as a powerful minion, so he does not die when he uh, touch the uh, circle. There's also a very powerful minion up here. He just recently uh, added into the game, so he's also considered one of the powerful minions. I will go to you with that uh, later. So I'm trying to just, just get level 8 here. That guy still not low weight. Okay. One tip for vampires: try to avoid fights with hunters on the first day until you get level eight. Bam, level eight. So, so I said, okay, I am level eight. So level eight means that I can stun. So my wife said, where to? She means where to attack. So usually I would go to the nearest city. This one. I usually go to this one because it's um, it's the closest one. So the reason why I don't want to let my minion come here is because I don't want them to die. Okay, so just summon minions, upgrade them into blood knights. Don't upgrade them into the bats unless you have to, because this guy has a lot of good skill on it. It can cripple hero, which can be used to slow them down. Make it easier for them to uh, for you to right click them and kill them. So this is the hero here. He also has a legendary item. Very nice. So I just cripple him. I try to kill him over there. You can see that his movement speed speed becomes really slow. This is one of the heroes from uh, from the city guard. The city guard can control the uh, the heroes. Um, there's three heroes that they can choose from. Um, this is the melee version. He is very tanky. Um, he can he also has an AOE AOE heal, very nice. And he can also resurrect minion uh, with a really long cooldown. And the other two heroes that they can choose is the uh, guild master, which uh, which is a little draw with a gun. Um, uh, that hero. Uh, deals a lot of AOE damage because he can put um, goblin uh, landmine um, around the uh, the area, and if vampires try to step on it, it would deal a lot of damage. The only exception that that does not take any damage when they step on the uh, landmine is the vampire lord and the vampire wife. Everything else takes damage as normal, and it deals a lot of damage. Another hero for uh, that they can choose from, besides from the uh, the melee version. I call it a priest, a warrior priest, and the uh, drop. A uh, drop is the uh, the uh, what is his name? He's the archer version. Um, I would uh, always choose him over the other two hero because um, that hero has a really really good stun, uh, and I like stun. Stun can keep you uh, control the vampires. So. This is what the hero that he choose, and um, I don't have any um, problem with that. That it might be his preference, but if uh, if it was me, then I would choose something else. So you can see the TP uh, signal in here. So the vampires, um, when they try to attack the city during the night, they um, the the hunters will try to defend it. So what the um, healer just do is that she just uses a skill that makes her invulnerable for 15 seconds. She also uses her ultimate that deals a lot of damage to creatures around her. So as you can see, everything it during um, in her um, in her uh, vision gets um, a deal a lot of damage. This is a very powerful skill, and when it happens, um, as a vampire player, you just try to run away from it until the thing uh, wears off. The only the um, back um, the only downside of this skill is that you have it's a channeling skill so you have to stand um, 
you have to stand there um, and not move it because if you move the spell will get cancelled so then okay so, okay. so, so that's it the spell will last for 8 seconds but it deals a lot of damage so you try to run away from it and then what I said here is come back and stun the healer so this is me oh, I said earlier we will always try to focus on the healer ideally you want your wife to just stun the healer So I use my ultimate right here. So sun hero for four seconds. Okay, this is very important. What the mage just did is that he used his ultimate to save her. Um, his ultimate is creating a bubble that's similar to the bubble that um, they put on the rune stone. Um, however. Minions don't die when they enter this one. This is a weaker version, uh, but um, everything in this circle will be invulnerable. So if he did not use the skill to save her, she would die uh, right away. I'm pretty sure because um, um, my wife can follow up with a three second stun. And with my boy and my W spell, she would die instantly. But because, uh, so you can see that she still has stun and then she, she does not stun anymore. So, very nice play from Mage. In this video, the Mage will save the, the priest a lot of times. And this is what Mage is supposed to do. You always have to make sure that the healer, or the priest, or the healer survive. So I run away because I failed to kill her. This is a seeker, it's very annoying too. She's trying to. What I tried to do earlier is I give the level to uh, my wife. So every time I give, uh, use a spell, it will make a laughing sound that, as you hear earlier. It gives her 500 gold and a, a level. With the higher level she wife, the more skill that she can skill up and the more damage that she can deal. Always want to try to use it um, before the before the the night ends because that skill can only evolve during the night. So, it's there. So I see this guy's out of position. I'm like, okay, so you're out of position. I'm just baiting him so he comes back, and then I'm gonna try to kill him. Okay, so he just blinked there. This guy has a skill that can blink. So. What you want to do is you want to try to bait that skill, so I cripple him. This is when I try to kill him, because he's out of position. Uh, all the hunters is here, where I'm here. So uh, I try to kill this guy, so he just uses a skill that blinks. Um, that is a skill that can be used to escape from, from me. So I try to chase him down. And my koi does not heal a lot of damage because my level is still low. If my level is like a little bit higher, then he would have probably die in the tree quick. So he didn't know where I am because I invis. Uh, so in this is his vision. He he doesn't see me. However, uh, this is me windwalk. So this is one of the spells that I told you earlier that's available to vampires already during the night. He can um, invis, and uh, it's just uh, similar to the windwalk um, uh, skill in uh, in uh, Warcraft 3. If you hit someone, it deals uh, bonus damage. This is his vision. Bam! I hit him, and I use my W skill. That's 56. So that's that uh, screaming earlier is. Uh, me using the uh, the skill chilling of winter in my altar. Uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, that is a, a really powerful skill, a spell that can uh, drain the uh, 
HP of the hunters by a lot. But you can see that their HP drops like crazy. But it is a one time use spell, so you, you don't want to use it uh, at the beginning of the game. So what I did earlier is because I, I try I want to try to kill her in here. But unfortunately for me the healer heal heals the uh, the seeker back. So I fail to kill her, so I waste my uh, my chill winter. It it's gone. It, uh, it is uh, only one time use, so when you use it it's over. No, which is not good for me. So we go on the healer again. Always will try to focus on the healer. My wife is still waiting on a, an angle to stun. The healer is very tanky too. So see that this guy is really low on mana. What I'm trying to do is okay. It's the priest to heal him right away, and I use my ultimate on him. He's gonna be stunned for a score second. Bam, bam, bam. If my wife can stun him right now, he would dead, but I think her son is on Kuda. So they heal back up really quick. So as you can see, the healer is extremely annoying. That's why you always want to kill her first. So you don't want any shenanigans. So when you're trying to nuke all the hunters down, bam, she heals and everything is just uh, heals back. Very annoying. So she, uh, she use uh, the combination of the uh, invulnerable spell and her ultimate again. Very very nice. Kills everything uh, around her. This is extremely annoying because vampires can't do anything when she's in one of them. We just have to run away. So basically, we fail to kill them. This guy is, is low on mana. He has a really powerful spell that can um, that can um, chain lightning um, in. So you can see, it, it does a lot of damage, not a lot. So basically now, um, I was trying to see if I can um, skill the, the priest, but she's so tanky. She has like uh, 23 armors, so I can't really kill her. The devotion aura comes from the, uh, from the priest. So stun there. I noticed that this guy got stunned. But they will heal, they will heal him right away. So I know, I, I realize that I can't kill them, so I have to run away from them. It's just wasting my time. It gives them level, but it does not give us anything. So I'll just run away. Wait for another time. So that skill that I just did is anti-magic shield. Very nice skill that you can use. The only thing that can dispel that is the um, the seekers. Um, First skill, uh, no, the seekers, yeah, the seekers first skill like, dispels magic. So, so um, as vampires, you always try to cast the um, the anti magic, uh, anti magic skill as uh, as early as you can. It, it protects you from from the from the stuns and, and, and uh, all other uh, spell. So my wife also has it too. I just try to run away. They can't really kill me if they try to chase me though, so it's also a waste of their time to doing that. So I realized that it's not gonna work, so I said just go back to the farm. So you can see that the night is almost over. When night comes, I become weaker again. But then I gain a couple of levels. This is uh, called the balance uh, feature of the game. Um, if the vampires does not manage to uh, get any uh, bashings, they will gain uh, a lot of levels and um, and also a huge chunk of money that can be used to buy items. So what I will always want to do is I want to buy a mana staff. This is the best item in the game in my opinion. It gives tiny intelligence, but the more important um, part of this item is that it gives a brilliant aura. This thing gives a lot of, of, of mana regen. You can see that my mana regen is just so fast because of this thing. It's so good. But just the only thing that you always want to try to get on the heroes is this thing. 
the second item that I want to buy is it's the silent sack. It's pretty simple. You just silent them people and the reason why I strap the um, it into this slot is because this is my hotkey. Uh, I set it as W so it's easier for me too when I try to focus on it. So I said God silence. So my wife, the reason why she's doing this is because she's trying to get her um, the minion, her uh, bat. So this has a short timer. Getting my bat which is over here for myself I get my minion in here speed up a little bit so the hunter is just trying to go back here to uh, to creep so these um, lower um, stone can be reactivated um, once every 15 minutes so you always want to try to do that so the way to symbol the um, lower creature is to click on a lower stone. Um, so you can see that it says a red rune indicates that you are near a place of secret power. So you click on it, it will summon a creature. This does not apply for the uh, priest character because he has a skill that can like, um, that can summon the lower creature without the need to buy a lower stone. Which saved them a bit of money. This thing only costs a hundred gold, so it does not cost a lot. When I do that, it's gonna summon a blood horror. This guy's very strong. This is one of the powerful features that I mentioned that does not die to the red circle in here. So you can see that this thing is also pro protected, and this is my wife. She's trying to harvest coal from this thing. Corrupted runestone. And she's trying to do what she's trying to do is she's trying to to uh, activate this. So this creature is for me to control. It. The bat is for my wife to control. It. So each one of us has a powerful minion. I personally like the bat more because it's stronger. This guy is slower. It's very slow. Look at him. Look at him. It's, it's very slow. I don't like this guy. Even though his damage is high, but his attack is so slow that uh, it doesn't matter. Right after this, I go back to the, the very first place that, that we creep. Remember this crack, crack camp earlier? Um, the first time we creep it, it's um, it's hard because we don't have a lot of levels. But now my level is pretty high, so it should be easier for me to creep. So the hunters should be contesting my farm right away. So you can see that okay, they're trying to to contest my. Uh, Area. I use an ultimate on the priest and I also silence her too. So after kill this guy, they will also get a legendary weapon. The reason why I'm still hanging around there is because I want to jack this item. For them. Bam, I got it. I was lucky because they didn't stun me. And I said, thank you. Very polite. I don't do that. It's not good. Okay, it's not good. This guy keeps me back. He must be trying to defend the cities from the, 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 um, the wife. The main objective before killing the king is you want to try to take down the bastions. There's four um, smaller cities. Uh, and. Every time you, when you try to uh, take down the bastions, it will uh, it will turn the city um, from human into undead. Uh, this is one of the smaller objectives that you always want to do. But really, to me, the hidden objective is to kill the healer. Uh, if you can kill the healer, then the game it's probably over, and you can go straight for the main main city. Because the really what really makes you win the game is to kill the king. So these are just for bonuses. If you can kill them, then you have your own bases and you gain another 50. Uh, you gain another 100 health for everyone, which is pretty good. Um, so um, I sorry I have to end the video in here because it is an hour and um, I will see you guys next time in the. Um, 
video analysis of um, Rise of the Vampire. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Thank you. Bye bye.